Welcome to February's Astro Tarot Channel. My name is Tiffany Corsara and every month I do a little video that um, does a tarot reading for the month and I also have the link to the astrology down below on my site tiffanycorsara.com So this is the tarot part of the Astro Tarot Channel for February 2014. The first week seems very interesting. On the first week we have Mercury going retrograde and it starts its uh, retrograde in Pisces I think and then it goes into Aquarius. Don't quote me on that because I'm never that great with the actual ways, random workings of things. But I do know that it does Pisces and Aquarius this month and um, it's quite interesting because the first two cards in the tarot actually do stand for Pisces and um, Aquarius. So the first one that we have, what we're starting off with this month, is the Hanged Man. And the Hanged Man, I would say, represents Pisces. It's the Neptune energy, which is the ruler of Pisces. And there's much emphasis on the foot and being upside down. Pisces rules the part of the foot. So this shows that we start this month very much in this hung up place. Now, um, it's interesting because with Mercury retrograde, we can get hung up on things being a certain way. And really it's about sacrifice and letting go of control or things being a certain way. So we've got that very strong message coming in on the first week of February, not only does the Hanged Man make an appearance, but the Fool as well, which is Aquarian in its energy, and of course February is a month of Aquarius. So what you have here is this very um, eccentric energy, it's deeply spiritual, and it's very much about, excuse me a minute, let me stick in. <laughs> Hello, Mystic. I'm sure a lot of you will be pleased that Mystic's coming in because she will usually miss Tony, darling. You're going to come up? Oh, well, we'll see what happens. So, basically, where was I? Yeah, the fool. <laughs> the fool energy has interruptions and unexpected happenings and surprises and visitations from the childlike energy in the family. <laughs> Yeah, that's where I was. So basically, this is saying that nothing can be very expected, not as it is expected in the first month of February. Lots and lots of interesting happenings may seem a little bit chaotic, like things aren't going to plan. But if that's the case, then perhaps you need to let go of the plan or throw the plan out of the window because you know what they say, God laughs at those with plans. Well, it's very much that case in the first week of February. You've also got another major arcana here, aloneness, which is the hermit. So on a deeper level, we do have quite a spiritual energy of reflection here. It shows that the first week is very much a case of um, getting very deep about who we are, you know, and really looking at what our spiritual path is. It's a great, great week for actually looking at what it is we want to do. Um, do isn't the right word. <laughs> there is no doing about the first week in February. What it is that we feel we are, there's some deep, deep, deep reflection here. It feels like there is a new identity really wanting to be born within us all. And it feels as if we have to dig deep and meditate on it and reflect, you know, on what ways our changes could be good for us. And uh, what that might mean is that we have to sacrifice a part of ourselves. You know, we have to be ready to die to who we were to become who we are. So we have that very strong in the first week. I mean, if you can go on a Vipassana or another meditation retreat fantastic if you can't then just try and bring it into your day and really do meditate on what your spiritual path is how that's developing where you're going 
with it. it doesn't even have to be about the spiritual path it can be like your life in general what is it that is needing to actually give way to make something new come in so that's very strong on the first week of february because they're all major arcana cards which means they're all spiritual big fatalistic cards so we're all kind of destined for that journey there okay and then in the second week of february we have the full moon in leo which is ruled by the sun and funnily enough that's what we have here <laughs> so we have uh, also this next card i don't know if you can see it maybe i'll come up so you can see it. You see that? That's the moon there in Cancer, which is ruled by the moon. Now, we had the moon in Cancer, full moon in Cancer this month in January, but we've got this uh, sense here of a month later, we've got the full moon in the next sign, which is Leo. Now, the moon is ruled by Cancer, so it's quite strong. We've got these energies blending very much at this moment in time, and that just feels very correct. Again, we've got this reflection energy here in the Four of Cups. So that reflection that we've been building up to with the full moon, it feels like we may well get some type of eureka moment going on because we've got here flowering which is a lady kind of bursting forth into the world into manifestation into physicality it's the queen of pentacles so there's some energy here about something really happening us really getting some kind of aha i know who i am i know what my identity is here i know my place in the world i know what i'm here to do we've got this energy going on quite well however do remember that it is mercury retrograde to me february feels like it's trying to <laughs> trying is the operative word it's trying to be a dreamy month it's trying to be a nostalgic month and it's trying very much to um you know kind of tell us to slow down and just go within because every time we seem to go out again we get pulled back in again there's some type of reining in it's like we've got to go deeper and we think that we've done it and it's like we go out there with our, our new message and our new um persona so to speak and then we just got get kicked back in again it's like no you've got to go deeper still you've got to go deeper still and it feels like this is the way it is for the first six months in 2014 so this year means business it, no cutting corners we've got to do it all properly and um it feels to me like we could get so high around the leo full moon it's so dramatic so so emotionally kind of Gregorius if you think about it it's on Valentine's Day as well and Leo rules the heart so there's a lot of dramatic energy and a sense of wanting to go out there and lord it and be big and be proud and yes kind of that extroverted energy is full on there at that time however <laughs> remember as I said Mercury is going retrograde until the 28th and even then it's always good to wait a week or so after it goes direct so for the whole of february we do have the kind of breaks on and there's a lot of energy in pisces which is all very dreamy as well so there is a sense that um although we may be getting things and really getting things on a very inspirational level there is a sense of needing to keep going back and keep getting the next layer of inspiration <laughs> rather than oh I've got an inspiration I'll go out and I'll put it out into the world I'm very guilty of that I'm a Leo uh, I find it very hard to keep going back in now this is the third week in February and we've got the eight of coins so it seems to be saying yes you can work on it you're working on it and that's fantastic but don't forget to take it easy because you've got the four of swords here which is another meditative sign it's saying more meditation and more reflection if not you're going to end up exhausted quite literally that's what this card here is called exhaustion which is the nine of wands 
Um, so it's saying, you know, it's quite hard going if you're trying to put your plans out there. It might not actually be the right time. You might find that it just feels like you're fighting against an invisible membrane or something along those lines. But don't, you know, throw the baby out with the bathwater if that's what's happening to you. Just come back in and use the time to work on fine tuning it to the next level. Again, what we have in the fourth week seems to be saying that none of us are listening <laughs> to what I've just been saying. I mean, like I said, I'm guilty of that as well. I kind of feel it in myself. I'm there and going, you think that I can just rein this inspiration in and not put it out there into the world? you got another thing coming. I mean, <laughs> so, you know, I can't really be sat here and, and not say that, otherwise I'd be a hypocrite. And the cards seem to be saying we'd all be hypocrites because what you've got here is the Seven of Wands. So this is the Warrior card. This is the sod that I'm going out there and I'm fighting for it. No matter how hard it gets, I am going to fight for this. And then you've got the Palace of Coins. So it does show here that there is some type of achievement with that which is fantastic, or there is some type of success with that, which is fantastic. But you have the control card. So control is the king of swords, so it's not that bad, really. But the fact that, you know, the deck that's come up with this one is um, called control. I'm going to go with that more because it also ties in with things here. I mean, what is the point of having success if you are uptight? That's the thing, right? So it seems like we're being asked to look at how we can relax and how we can enjoy our lives whilst being creative rather than getting so uptight with things that we just have to keep going and then we get ourselves in a right attachment situation. Now, that's the thing which the Han Mang was saying at the beginning of February, you know, that it's a, you know... A month to look at what we get hung up on and why and what that does to us and how it feels um you know i i've had my own path with that a lot and it does feel so much more blissful when we can just let go and we can just trust the universe and go with the flow and not stress ourselves out by stupid imposed deadlines that we've maybe imposed even on ourselves and things along those lines so there's something here about, yeah, okay, you can fight for it and you may well achieve it, but at what price? I mean, what's the point of being successful if you can't be happy? That's a huge price to pay. So I think that's the way the universe works sometimes. It gives us what we want if we're really, really gung-ho about something. But then we realise afterwards that, you know, that wasn't the best way, really, um, through some price. So just be warned there that the price might be high if that's what you feel like doing. Yes, you may well get the success, but there may well be a price to pay in terms of your health or your um, consciousness or your just ability to be happy in the world, really. So the general for February is quite interesting. We've got the Queen of Cups, and we've got the King of Wands, and we've got the King of Cups, which is the healing card here. So this to me tells me that the Moon and the Sun are working very strongly together. Um, this is why we've got so much reflection going on, and this is also why we've got so much new identity going on why we're seeing very clearly who we are and what we want to do. And I do feel that that message comes through really strongly this month, you know, who we are and what we want to do. Uh, but I do think we do need some patience. And uh, there is a sense of being told to go back over things at each level a few times before we kind of put it out into the world. And that is the healing, you know, it's a sense here of, like, let's get this in balance. Let's get the activity, which is the king of wands, and the passivity, which is the queen of cups. She's the receptive receiver um, of the messages. And then the king of wands goes out there and creates it in the world. But it's like saying, let's get this right. Let's get this balance right. 
That also tells me that there's things here around the feminine and the masculine being healed as well. It feels to me like in the first, um, yeah, actually all the way through the month, it feels to me like we're quite concentrated on ourselves, you know, our spiritual path, our career path, where we're going, what we're doing. Um, there isn't much emphasis on relationships, even though it's Valentine's month. Um, it feels to me that even though there isn't much emphasis on relationships, that's actually not a bad thing. Sometimes we can focus so much on our relationships that it becomes a problem or becomes an issue. Um, and the issues in our relationships become more of an issue because we're just going over and over it so much. This feels to me like, you know, that's what we've done in January. We've done so much kind of thinking about our relationships, going back over them, all of those things. It feels to me now that February is very much a case of, okay, all right, well, it's time to look at me and it's time to look at my career and maybe I haven't made any decisions on my relationship that are long lasting or relationships in general. Um, and that's okay, I'm just going to think about something else for a while. <laughs> and I feel like as that happens, what happens actually is there comes a natural kind of readjustment around relationships where it gets into balance and it starts to heal of its own accord. So have a lovely, lovely February and um, I will see you in March. And it's such a pity you didn't get to see Mystic. She's kind of down there with the, with the heater. Maybe I'll lift her up just to say goodbye. <laughs> I don't think she'll like me very much, but there we go. Mystic, come here. Come and say hello, because people love you. <laughs> there we go. Say goodbye. So it's bye-bye from me and bye-bye from Mystic. And we'll see you in March. And remember, if you want a session, the link to my website is below. Say bye-bye.